Hello, I'm Manoj Karmakar. Welcome to ISSPS TV. In this next presentation, Professor George Feigl from the University of Witten in Germany is going to be discussing with us the functional anatomy of the sciatic nerve and common anatomical variations relevant for sciatic nerve blockade. If you like any of our videos, do remember to like and share them with your friends. And don't forget to subscribe so that you can get regular notifications of any future upload. So thank you again for the introduction, Manoj. Um, well, I talk about this sciatic nerve and uh, first of all, uh, we just have to get again uh, to a short repetition, which is not more than a minute. As you can see, um, if it's working, Oops, here we go. Uh, <coughs> so you get the sacral plexus, uh, which is uh, formed by um, the ventral rami again from L4 to S4 or, or S3, depending a little bit. Uh, if you, for example, involve the uh, pudendal nerve or not. If you uh, include the pudendal nerve in the sacral plexus, you have to include the, uh, the fourth sacral segment. Uh, if you exclude the pudendal nerve, which uh, some uh, textbooks do, um, you have to exclude the S4 segment. Anyway, we include it, uh, and the pudendal nerve is, because of its um, connection and topography to the sciatic nerve, a very important nerve, uh, which should be taken uh, into consideration for different pain blocks and also regional anesthetic blocks. The sciatic nerve itself uh, gets major contributions from L4 to S3. Um, and as you know, divides into two nerves, which is the common perineal or fibular nerve and the tibial nerve. Anyway, it's a very important thing uh, that you take a look on, on the development of these, uh, the sciatic nerve, um, because the common perineal or fibular nerve uh, gets its major contribution from the more cranial segments as the tibial nerve. And this is a very important thing concerning also the variations of the sciatic nerve, uh, especially in the exit area of the uh, lesser pelvis area to the gluteal region. So where is the um, sciatic nerve exiting? It's exiting through the so-called area of the infrapiriform and foramen, which means you get the uh, greater sciatic foramen, and then uh, you have the piriformis muscle exiting to reach the uh, trochanteric fossa. And underneath you have this infrapiriformal piriformal foramen, which is, uh, well, quite a, a small foramen, but anyway, there are many structures uh, running out um, like, for example, the sciatic nerve, the, infraglutal, uh, the inferior gluteal artery and nerve, also the internal pudendal artery and the pudendal nerve uh, and the posterior femoral cutaneous. So you see a lot of structures running through uh, to go to the distal areas. Uh, if we make a drawing or uh, took a look at the drawing, you see this uh, foramen, which is uh, absolutely filled up with structures over there. Uh, and not only nerve fibers, but also arteries and veins, um, which are then, for example, the vein draining into the lesser pelvis area. If you take now a dissection, where you can see the gluteal region and then uh, make a, make a uh, uh, windowing of the uh, gluteus maximus muscle, you see the uh, piriformis muscle and then the sciatic nerve, which is really a really thick nerve uh, at that time already and not, uh, for example, separated, uh, as you can see sometimes also in the uh, ultrasound images. And you see just medial to it, there is the posterior femoral cutaneous, um, sometimes in a very close relationship to it, but uh, over here, uh, this is the nerve, which is a little bit more uh, located medially. So if we take now a second look on this uh, foramen, 
you can see more medially the internal pudendal artery and then the nerve which is even more medial to it uh, the pudendal nerve which has to uh, enter again the lesser pelvis area but underneath the liberto ani muscle uh, and is then entering also a small tunnel which um, is called the alcox canal uh, the sciatic nerve itself uh, passes underneath the great uh, gluteus maximus, but is more superficial to the short pelvic muscle, uh, which are co also called the pelvic trochanteric muscle group. And this is very important because you really can see distinct uh, the, the nerve itself uh, and also with its co connection and topography to the other structures. So what about variations over there? As I already told you, you can see the so-called piriformis muscle syndrome, uh, where the perineal or common uh, fibula nerve pierces the piriformis muscle. And therefore, you have a, a separation by uh, this muscle, which can continue down to the popliteal fossa area. So they never really uh, are that close to each other, but really run in two different canals distally. In the area of the gluteal region, you have always to, to think about the topography and the muscular structures which, which can be visible with ultrasound images. And at the level of the um, sciatic tubercle and also the um, so-called uh, intertrochanteric crest, you have this uh, muscular structure, which is the quadratus femoris muscle. Um, and then you can see over here, if you make a cross section, you see this muscle as a very hyperechogene, um, well, mus muscle partially really hanging through and uh, getting the sciatic nerve close to its su um, surface. As you can see this on this cross section, you see over here, this is the femur and the sciatic tubercle with this distinct uh, tendinous origin of the hamstring muscle group. And then the quadratus femur is passing going laterally and the sciatic nerve which is uh, the, uh, covered by the uh, gluteus maximus muscle and you can see distinct also a very separated nerve part which is also already the posterofemoral cutaneous nerve so if we make another cross section you see this hyperechogene uh, muscular structure which is really very very useful as an anatomical landmark if you start you search for, for example, uh, the pudendal nerve or also for the sciatic nerve uh, from distal going more uh, proximal. Uh, you know that there are also other uh, ways to, um, to uh, identify the sciatic nerve, for example, proximal distal uh, direction. So you see the quadratus femoris and again the sciatic nerve in this area. If we move now more proximal, you see we are now at the level of the obturator internus muscle, which is turning around uh, the sciatic bone and then going to the uh, to the trochanteric fossa. And you see the, the sciatic nerve itself is getting more medially already. Uh, if now, if we go now to the area of the sciatic spine, you get uh, over here the sciatic spine and you see the sciatic um, sacrotubular ligament, um, sacrospinal ligament, sorry. And over here, the sciatic nerve again, but also, of course, be accompanied now with the inferior gluteal nerve, as you can see it over here, and also the inferior gluteal artery. And just medially to it, you will find over here, for example, the internal pudendal artery and the pudendal nerve. And if you uh, move now on to the infrapiriformal foramen, you see that the piriformis muscle is uh, coming from the uh, well ventral surface of the sacrum and running distally and laterally. And you see this area, this is now the infrapiriformal foramen quite easily. But uh, let's take a short look a little bit closer that you can see you are now really in the less, uh, lesser pelvic area with all the different structures which are medially. And this is something which has to be uh, taken into consideration that you do not uh, position your needle tip too, too deep. 
because then you're really in the area of the lesser pelvic area and there are huge venous um, plexus over there, which can be damaged and you have a lot of hemorrhage and bleedings over there. Um, I already talked about the pudendal nerve, which is more medially. And so uh, just think about, okay, we get the, now the isolation of the sciatic nerve. Uh, if we can inject, for example, a higher volume of, let's say, three, four, five milliliter, does it really spread, for example, to the pudendal nerve? And the answer is unfortunately no. Uh, sometimes it does. And sometimes, as you can see, it does not, because over here we made a singular injection of the pudendal nerve, which is uh, with the latex, and it does not spread to the, uh, to the sciatic nerve itself. And we really uh, put the question, why? Uh, and again, it's, it's like in the brachial plexus area, you get this septa, really a, a very dense connective tissue layer, which is separating or partially or sometimes separating the pudendal nerve and the internal pudendal artery from the sciatic nerve itself. So if you, if you turn it now around and say, okay, I can inject at the area of the sciatic nerve and it's running medially, sometimes it does, sometimes unfortunately it does not. And therefore you have to uh, do a separate and uh, uh, injection of both of these nerves. It's like a snipering uh, as you already have, have to do, for example, in the axillary fossa concerning the brachial plexus. Let's move on. Uh, this is now a posterior view of uh, a lower limb area, gluteal region. You see the quadratus femoris in this area. Uh, over here, this is the obturator internus with the gemelli. This is the piriformis, the infrapiriformis foramen and the nerve running distally with the posterior femoral cutaneous nerve, close relationship to it. And take a, now a little look on the topography of the nerve, which is very close to the sciatic tubercle. Um, regularly you found this uh, three thirds of the line in between the greater trochanter and the sciatic tubercle. And then it's, it used to be uh, that it said, okay, in between the middle and the medial third, you find the sciatic nerve. Uh, not that true because it's really very close to the sciatic tubercle. So really take a look in this area. Um, if we make now a cross section again with the quadratus femoris, it's quite familiar to you because you can see the quadratus femoris again and the sciatic nerve just uh, superficial to it with the posterior femoral cutaneous in this area. And now let's take a look where's the pudendal nerve is already in this Alcox canal which is can be, we can be visible quite easily with the fascia of the obturator internus muscle. Okay, so what about um, now a cross-section and enlargement of the sciatic nerve? You can see much more space in between and already distinct the two nerve parts, which is medially the tibial nerve and the common perineal nerve laterally. And over here, this is, you can see already a small distinct fascia layer, which is separating now the posterior femoral cutaneous from uh, the perineal and the tibial part of the sciatic nerve itself. So we have somebody who, who described also this uh, wonderful perineal sheet. I know that's the term which some, uh, for uh, example, do not like to hear. But anyway, is what about the perineal sheet or any other term of it? Does it exist also at level, for example, of the sciatic nerve? And uh, I can really confirm that such a sheet or dense connective list, tissue layer, uh, however you want to uh, define it or name it, uh, exists. And let's take a look on the dissection. For example, you have the greater uh, the gluteus maximus muscle. We elevate the gluteus maximus muscle. Over here, you can see the hamstring muscles covered by the fascias. Um, then continue with uh, elevating. Then again, we have over here the sciatic nerve running distally, still covered by this dense connective tissue layer. And then over here, you can uh, open this uh, fascia layer uh, and the sciatic nerve, which is running distally, we think, okay, is this already the so-called paraneural sheet? 
No, it's not, <clears throat> because if we continue again, we can still have this connective tissue layer around. And then you can see, you can open this uh, really fascial tunnel, which is uh, formed by a fascia, which is in the pelvic area, uh, well developed. And then going distally, and this is a tunnel where we can insert the tweezer and advance the tweezer until the popliteal fossa. So it remains in this tunnel, which is really surrounding the both of uh, tibial and common fibula nerve uh, in total. So what we are thought, thinking about is where this uh, so-called sheet is coming from, originating from. And we assume uh, at this point uh, that it's coming from the pari parietal uh, pelvic fascia. So it might be continuation and forming like a tunnel, which is uh, exiting and uh, also um, converging distally uh, and surrounding the sciatic nerve in this area. If we make a cross section, you also can say this, uh, this fibrous tunnel, which is not the epineurum, which, which you can see over here. It's really a huge space and uh, surrounding this area and surrounding the nerve. Uh, and again, you can uh, dissect it in, in longitudinal sections, and it can also uh, form by a tweezer, but you can see over here, sometimes it's a more dense and sometimes it's a thinner layer as uh, you can see it on this dissection. What other um, problems can you have? Um, this is something which uh, was a case report, but anyway, it should uh, especially give you, um, well, uh, an idea what might happen if you do not follow the guidelines, for example, intragluteal muscular injection. Well, <clears throat> you all know that uh, the injections for COVID are performed regularly in uh, the, the deltoid muscle. Anyway, there's still the, the so-called Hochstetter uh, method uh, to the middle gluteus, uh, the gluteus medius muscle, uh, which should be over here. And some do not respect these quadrant, quadrants and <clears throat> perform the injection through the um, gluteus maximus muscle. And if they insert the needle too deep, for example, you might cause uh, an ossification of the tendon of the piriformis and also an ossification which is running parallel to the sciatic nerve. This would be the cause of the sciatic nerve. And as you can see, this is a, like a, um, a tooth of uh, a tiger, more or less. And this was uh, caused by a wrong intramuscular injection, which is parallel to the sciatic nerve. And the peak was really staying in the uh, sciatic nerve, causing pain. <clears throat> this is something which has to be uh, taken into consideration sometimes. If we go now more distally, uh, you find the popliteal fossa. Uh, and you find, of course, the borders of it, which is the bi fem biceps femoris laterally and proximally. Uh, the gastrocnemius lateralis is lateral distally and medially, uh, proximally, you find the semitendinosus and especially the semimembranosus muscle. And uh, distomedial, you find the gastrocnemius muscle, the medial gastrocnemius muscle. So it's more or less uh, like a rhombus, um, especially in the distal areas, very distinct and wonderful uh, borders uh, formed by the muscle. And the tibial nerve is really uh, straight running distally. Um, in, the, in the popliteal fossa, it's the most superficial structure uh, in this area uh, covered by the popliteal fascia itself. And the common perineal fibular nerve is more or less covered by the biceps femoris tendon uh, a little bit underneath uh, and therefore uh, get the cover up by, by this uh, muscle. Uh, running distally uh, and passing the head of the fibula dorsally to turn around at the neck of the fibula uh, going ventrally and entering then the per, uh, common or the fibula muscular compartment. So let's take a look on the dissections and also cross sections in this area um, where you have this dense fascia and underneath 
if we elevate the fascia, you have now this, this entire fat tissue compartment. Uh, where, where when you inject, you really have this absorption uh, in this area uh, by the fat tissue. And even if you elevate the um, or remove the fat tissue, you find the tibial nerve first, and then you can see lateral and more a little bit at the border of the um, biceps femoris muscle, you find the common fibular nerve, which is running distally, as you can see it over here. Um, then you have some branches arriving, which are the sural branches, the lateral sural branches, and also communications to the sural nerve. If we uh, remove or move the um, semimembranosus and tendinosus more medially, you find uh, the, the tibial nerve really, really running straight down uh, and be covered by uh, the hamstring muscles in the more uh, proximal area. Make, let's make a cross section now. You can see over here on this cross section the um, popliteal vessels and also over here the sciatic nerve with this distinct uh, already separation by the nerves. And uh, uh, let's take a look on the enlargement. As you can see, this is the common parallel of fibular nerve, the tibial nerve, still uh, being close together already in the popliteal fossa. Nevertheless, you find a small nerve down here, which is separated also by a small fascia uh, because it's running down with a fat-filled fascial tunnel, which is the posterior femoral cutaneous. And if we take a look now on <clears throat> this, this paraneural sheet again in the uh, popliteal fossa, this is something which is quite nice because if you inject, for example, in between the two, you still find this uh, perfect, um, well, distribution spread underneath this uh, sheet. <clears throat> As Manush Kamaka already said to you, this is uh, causing a very distinct uh, proximal distal um, spread. And absolutely, if you're underneath this uh, sheet, this will stay in this area. It cannot uh, go to the fat tissue. It cannot go uh, really, really para to this uh, fascia. It stays underneath and gets a huge uh, extent, extension proximal distally. Even that if you inject, it might reach, for example, also the, the infra, infragluteal region um, because it's really previewable uh, that the spread only can stay in this tunnel. And this is something what you have to keep in mind concerning all the different distributions. What else can be? If you uh, follow or trace uh, the sciatic nerve distally, as one major important thing that you get also sometimes a very late uh, separation of these nerves at level of the knee joint gap. So don't, don't be afraid. And if you, if you really uh, move the probe distally, it might be that both of them, common perineal, uh, fibular and also tibial nerve, are still very close together, very close together, very close together. And then uh, very finally, the common fibular nerve turns laterally and run laterally to reach the head of the fibula. Okay, so I think that's from my point of view. Um, one nerve still missing, a posterior femoral cutaneous, which is also very uh, <clears throat> distinct with its course. As you can see, it's uh, still very close to the sciatic nerve in the gluteal region. And from the infragluteal region, it's separating uh, very, very um, uh, to, to remain superficially, uh, but is superficial to the biceps femoris. And this is something which is very important because if you go distally, for example, as you can see it over here, you have the posterior femoral cutaneous underneath the fascia, the, the trunk of this nerve remains underneath and runs distally. You have the, infra, uh, the cunium inferioris over here. And then if we uh, open the fascia of the thigh, you can see the trunk of the nerve running underneath the fascia and just send some, some fibers, some branches through the fascia to the skin areas. And 
as you can see, this is the biceps femoris over here. You see the, the, uh, the posterior femoral cutaneous. And then if we open and elevate, still the posterior femoral cutaneous, but, and this is an important thing, still separated from the sciatic nerve in this area. So if you really want to block them, you have to block them again separately. And this is something what you always, it's like a deja vu. We found it in the brachial plexus. We found it in the femoral nerve. We found it everywhere. You find these fascial tunnels and the separations by the fascial structures. Okay. So thank you again for uh, your attention. And you can see it still motivating if you do it bisexual, for example, a thousand times or performing blocks a thousand times. It's still thrilling and it's still a challenge each day. Thank you very much.